Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm finally back with yet another episode of Building Coruscant in Lego. We're going to continue working on the third floor as well as do some fixes on the first and second floor. So really, really exciting. Definitely going to be tackling that clone bar in this episode, so I'm really excited about that. As well as a couple other changes, which I'll get into in just a second. Now, before we get into this episode, just want to do a quick little haul from our new series sponsor, and that is Engineero Customs. Engineero Customs is an amazing website that sells custom Lego Star Wars minifigures from Sham Syndulla and Bail Organa to Cad Bane and Cal Kestis. They have a wide variety of custom printed Lego Star Wars minifigures. So definitely check out the link in the description below to pick yours up today. Now they were able to provide me some figs for a discounted price. So again, huge thank you to them. And let's jump right into it. So we got four amazing figures here. And you can kind of see what those are already. I've already built one here. And this is the Coruscant Underworld Police. Now these characters were seen specifically in Season 5 of Star Wars The Clone Wars, the Ahsoka and the Run episodes. And I mean, these look great. Again, Lego had never made him. I did make my own custom upper levels of Coruscant Police, but we never got the lower level police. So it's really cool to see this here. Like an engineer customs did a great job with this figure. It does have 360 degree printing here. And he did kind of use this nice helmet piece also. And you can see right there. So some amazing detailing. We got four of these for now. We'll definitely be picking up a few more in the future. But these will look great in the mock, especially kind of patrolling the lower levels as well as for a couple of the scenes in the mock, including the train scene where Ahsoka is spotted by the police. These will come in handy for sure. Really, really amazing figures. And again, definitely check out the link in the description below for Engineero Customs to pick yours up today. Now let's go ahead and jump right into it and start off with the second floor. All right, we're going to go ahead and start this episode off by taking a look at this section here on the left. Specifically here, we have the Spider Arms Hostel on the right, and then the warehouse where Five's death scene occurs on the left. And personally, I'm not too happy with really both of these buildings. Specifically, the Five's death scene warehouse, it just doesn't look anything like what you see in the episode. I'll have a picture on the screen now. I think I'd do better, definitely make something much more accurate and closer to that warehouse. I especially kind of love that entrance to the warehouse, something quite unique in that kind of triangular look. I'm going to actually go ahead and try and give another jab at it and see if I can make a more accurate Fives warehouse. And honestly, I'm probably going to tear down both of these buildings here and just make one large warehouse. I think that will probably look the best, kind of taking up this entire left section. I think that's where we're going to go ahead and start off this episode, and I'll get back to you once I've made some progress. And here is a look at the completed warehouse, and I've got to say, it looks great. Now, this is definitely much more accurate to what you see on screen. Gonna love a picture to that on the screen right now. And I've got to say, it's turned out really nicely. So it's really separated the two main sections. So you do have this kind of entranceway here. This is made using the snot or studs not on top technique, with specifically with the bricks on their side. And I think it looks quite nice. You do have the brick built. 18, which is actually something I really wanted to do. I didn't want to just have a sticker or a decal of number 18. I did want to make it brick built, and that's probably one of my favorite parts of the mock. Then you do have the two doors here, and these are stationary doors, but I still think it looks fine. Again, this mock is pretty much for display. You know, just having these kind of stationary doors, I think, isn't too much of a problem. And then above it, you do have kind of the top section. Now, this is where we didn't get to see too much in terms of on screen what it looked like. Again, you do get some brief looks at it. It is definitely a bit plain. You do have kind of some two large pipes in the center, as well as some kind of pipe detailing on the side. I did end up mostly doing light bluish gray brick. Did kind of add some greebling with some different types of bricks, like the masonry bricks, the groove bricks, and then also some nice piping and wire detailing. And then finally, I did end up adding this vent here. Now, this is actually not my design. This is by the amazing builder Hypolite Bricks on Instagram. He had this really cool vent design in a couple of his, I believe, Coruscant mocks as well. It looks amazing. So a huge shout out to him. Link in the description below. Definitely check out some of his amazing builds. Let's go ahead and jump into the interior. Starting off, the floor design here is made using the bricks on their side technique. And I did end up adding some greebling using some of the masonry and groove bricks. And I think that looks good. Didn't want to make it look too plain. 
And then you have a bunch of different box and container designs inspired from a variety of mocks I've seen online, as well as from my own imagination. The majority of these box designs are once again from Hypolite Bricks on Instagram. But he had some really cool box designs, so I did end up by using them here as well. Starting off on the left, again, this is a warehouse, it's an abandoned warehouse, but I did want to still add some detail, not make it look too plain. So you got kind of some nice different kind of canisters here, some kind of circular containers, and then some unique box designs using kind of those modified bricks as well as kind of the original box design I had from before. And then you have some other kind of containers here. And then this is the control panel that Fives uses for the ratio. shield. And you of course have Fives here. Now he is made using the black hair Kanan headpiece here as actually that looks perfect, especially with the kind of transition to this darker flesh tone for the clones in 2020. I think that the black hair Kanan headpiece looks great. Really has kind of that proper uh, goatee like Fives does. So that's Fives there. And then we have, of course, Clone Wars Anakin and Captain Rex. Then in terms of the warehouse as a whole, again, you do have nice greebling throughout it on the walls. And then you do have a couple of fans. So in the episode, there are a couple of fans. They can have some air circulation and cooling. So these fans do move. So that's kind of cool. And there's some nice pipe detailing to connect them. And then finally, you do have a few lights on the top. So there is a look at the warehouse. Definitely one of the saddest scenes in the Clone Wars. But now let's go ahead and move on to the clone bar. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the Clone Bar 79. So this is where clones would hang out kind of on their spare time. And of course, Fives would meet Jesse here and eventually get him to get General Skywalker and Rex to meet him in the warehouse down below. Right off the bat, when I first saw the bar, especially that interior with kind of all those unique colors, I fell in love with it and I knew I had to include it. Because it's such a cool building, one that I've really excited to build, always wanted to build. That was like one of the main buildings I wanted to make when I even started this series. I really do want to do it justice. Sadly, space limitations as usual. I have gone ahead and decided that rather than making it a half bar, I'm going to go completely this entire section will be the clone bar. Now it's a bit thin, so there won't be as much width for the interior, but I think that'll be fine. I think I'll definitely be really able to add some amazing details on that interior, especially using some cool custom stickers and decals I make, but I'm really excited. And in terms of the exterior, it's definitely a bit bland on the front, but I think maybe adding kind of some tile and wedge plate detailing on the front to kind of get those unique angles and turns that you see on that front section. I think that will add enough detail to the build. Now let's go ahead and jump right into it. I'll get some work done and I'll get back to you. Gone ahead and done some more work. And here's a look at the Clone Bar 79. And I got to say, this is looking great. I'll have a picture on screen now. But again, this was a bit of a unique bar. The front facade was, you know, relatively simple, but it was definitely quite nice, quite colorful, had some nice angles to it. It was really fun just to kind of implement that in this build. So in the front here, you do have the main entranceway. You do have these orange stripes in the blue and above. You do have a couple of these indents, then some more details along the section here. It's actually pretty much exactly identical to the bar you see on screen. Again, I'll have a few more close-up shots of the bar. And yes, it does have a purple door. I sadly don't have any purple parts, so I will be adding a door in the future. And then above it, you do have some uh, interesting look at it. It's definitely above this main entranceway, a very plain building. You do have these kind of large panels, which I ended up making using these kind of plate and tile pieces. I think that looks great. And then right above it, you do have these kind of fluorescent neon lights in this kind of magenta, purple color and then you also have a bit of kind of that cyan blue in it as well. But overall it looks really good. The one main thing, the more famous part of this bar is that it just has this huge 79 sign which would be going kind of right above it on the roof. Now that is the really the tricky part and I ended up coming up with this idea. There is this unique salmon colored piece and this actually quite closely matches the color of that sign. I don't have too much of it on hand now, but I'm thinking of just stacking it and just adding a bunch of it here on the top. And then if possible, maybe doing a brick built circular 79 sign rather than just doing a sticker, maybe doing a brick built one. 
kind of using the same kind of techniques I did with the 18 down there. Let's see if that works, but I think that would look great. And it's a little bit tough to see, but I do have some greeble detailing here. So this would be kind of where the sign would be going. So right ahead of it, you do have some nice greeble detailing, which I think came out really nice as well. There's a look at the exterior of 79s, and you do have this uh, nice little platform here, which is accurate. I do have a nice speeder bike here, as well as some of these caution stripes. All right, and here we have a look at the interior so far. As I said before, this was definitely what caught my eye for this bar, the interior. It's just so unique, mainly kind of having these large translucent curved lime green screens, kind of with these unique graphics. So that was kind of what caught my eye and made this bar quite unique. So I had to have something like that in this build. And this is what I've come up with. I ended up going ahead and using some hinge pieces to connect a bunch of these two by two and two by four lime green tiles. And I think it looks actually really good, quite close to what you see on screen. And of course I'll be putting or attempting to put some sort of graphics on these. So that'll be really fun. Then below it, you do have the bar. Again, as I'll quickly remove a figure here, the bar, if you look at the concept art images, is actually this unique brown color with lighter blue colored countertop. And it actually looks quite nice. Again, having more unique colors and bars kind of adds to it. And then it's a bit tough to see, but behind it, you do have some drinks. And then I did use a couple of those stickers from the Bad Bad Shuttle. I think those were kind of cool to add as posters on the side. And finally, the second section here. So you do have one screen here. I'll have another kind of large screen with some graphics on it as well. And then you have a nice balcony. So if you look at the bar in the show, it does have a nice balcony on the side. And again, it's uh, quite lit up inside. So you do again have the purple lights, some more translucent orange. And this will kind of be the entrance to the bathroom where Fives meets, I believe, Jesse. Rather than including the whole bathroom build, just have the entrance to it. I'll have some tables here. I'm out of parts, so that's kind of why I stopped at this position. With the touches of the purple and the kind of translucent orange, I think it does look quite lit up, quite nice. And overall, it's turned out great. We'll go ahead and move on to one more section before the end of this episode, and that is doing some more work on the front landing pad. All right, and finally, to end this episode off, let's go ahead and take a look at the courtyard or landing area. Now, I did actually make quite a few changes here. Mainly, I redid the entire flooring here as before it was just a bunch of plain light bluish gray brick. It was actually quite clean and these kind of under levels of Corazon, they're definitely quite dirty, not as well maintained. So I couldn't just have a smooth platform. And so I ended up going ahead and redoing it and actually adding a bunch of greebling uh, using just a variety of different modified bricks, a bunch of dark tan and dark bluish gray highlights. And I think actually that looks really good. Definitely adds a bit more texture. Now I did also change the layout. So originally I had a vendor booth here and one here and the rest of it was empty, but I did actually end up adding a uh, small little market section here. What we have here is I condensed the market into one area. If you watch the Clone Wars, you know the episode where R2 and C-3PO are going to get that Jogan fruit for Padme. They go to that kind of market section and there are a bunch of tiny kind of boots and uh, vendor stalls all bunched together. And so that's kind of what I was going for here. I think that looks much better, you know, add some more character to the build. Here we have a look at the two vendor stalls. These are made using a variety of these different cloth pieces. You have a bunch of nice kind of colorful fruits throughout, as well as a bunch of different crate containers similar to what I used in Five's warehouse. The next suit here, this is actually, I believe what's some sort of vendor or food stall. Uh, you see these quite a bit in the Clone Wars on Coruscant and they can actually fly, which is pretty interesting. I did end up including one of those as well. Again, I think it looks good. I'm gonna have a little name section here. And overall, I think the market section looks great. I'll probably have one more stall or vendor booth right here in the center. R2 and C-3PO kind of walking around to represent that scene. And then I have a little police droid. The other section, it's not complete yet. Still have to do some greebling here, but I'm a bit low on parts. Definitely much better than what it was before. So there is a look at the updated courtyard. But anyways, here's a final look at Corazon altogether. Again, I know updates haven't been that often. Probably one to two more updates is really all I have left now, is completing the buildings here on the third floor and the train station, adding figs, and it's done. The whole mock's done, so really, really exciting. 
But anyways, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more videos coming very soon. If you enjoyed it, a thumbs up would be great. Do not forget to subscribe and stay tuned for more videos coming very soon. And I'll see you all next time.